Not today, you guys. Hi. See, I promised, didn't I? Grumpy old man. you caught me so you guys have seen the studio before most of you guys that have been following the channel know this is where I work I've called it the bat cave because it's got really cool chill lighting but um, I've, I've had to install quite a bit of lighting to get it where I want and I'm still going so I've got studio lights there studio lights up there the big overhead comes on and what I want to do is I want to do recessed lighting all along my spray bench wall. Um, I think that that's almost going to be key, but recently a bunch of you guys have been asking for me to give you kind of a tour of the airbrush gear. I'm going to link in the description below the last studio tour that I did. It was fairly all-encompassing, but it wasn't geared specifically towards the airbrushing community. So that's what we're going to do today. So grab some popcorn and your favorite morning beverage, and let's take a journey. I'm going to start out over here because this is the primary thing that I rely the most heavily on every single day to get the job done, because I do this every single day to get my job done. I started out like many of you guys did with a tabletop small master TC40 tankless compressor and it lasted me for I want to say almost three years. Um, the volume of work that I have done obviously from then till now has increased. Uh, I, I started airbrushing um, probably four years ago and in 2016 um, began a small business, incorporated myself and away we went. I gave up my day job and I decided that I was going to do something that I loved to do. When I wasn't at my day jobs, I, I like to fish. So I was with um, Bassmaster out of Maryland, the Bass Open, and competed with a club called Crabtown Bassmasters. Awesome group of guys. Love ya. Shout out. But it became my whole world and I quickly realized that if I was going to put a harness on my fishing that I needed to do something creative with it. And I've always been an artist. I've always painted canvas and watercolors. So long story short, I decided to put down my paintbrush and pick up an airbrush and away we went. And I decided that I was going to sink money into it. I pulled money out of my 401k that I had accumulated over the past six, seven years and incorporated myself and did the legal aspect of it the right way and then struggled and struggled and struggled and the first 18 months were tough and the first two years were tough but then along comes 2018 and things got a little bit easier i got a little bit better with what i was doing and i realized that i also love to teach what i know um, one of my mentors that I always will sing praises of, Michael Ornstein, took me under his wing and without really realizing it, created somewhat of a monster because I aspired to not only paint as well as him, but teach as well as him because he is a phenomenal teacher. So I hope that I'm making those guys a little bit proud of, of what I'm doing with the, with the craft. So that leads us to where we are here, where I've got 5,000 subscribers. I'm on my 460th video, and I have a full-fledged art studio and shop out here in the garage. And it's in a garage because why pay overhead when you don't have to? When I get bigger, and I'm hoping to get bigger because everybody's got to have goals, then we'll talk about a larger studio or a detached studio or something. But for right now, this serves my needs. I can get 40 pieces done a day roughly when I'm hauling butt. 
and I need tools to do that. So the first thing that makes sense is to talk about the compressor. The second thing that makes sense is to talk about the airbrush. The compressor went from a TC40 master hand, uh, not handheld, but basically kind of tankless set right here on the corner of this. And then I was convinced by another phenomenal painter who's way better than, uh, it's. he's not even human, he's so good. Gerald Novick said, hey Jen, why don't you get a real compressor and put that other stuff aside bite the bullet, save your money, and get this. And I did, and I haven't looked back. This is phenomenal. This is California Air Tools 8010. It's an eight-gallon tanked. Uh, it's got a little deal in the bottom where you have to drain the air because it, it carries moisture throughout it, and you need to drain that off. But there's, a, there's another link that I'll leave you guys for that if you want to know how to set one up, get one, yada, yada. I'll leave that down there, too always got my roots going on so Maryland my Maryland from the compressor we go to and I just like you guys you know you, you get told when you start fishing don't buy garbage don't buy crappy rods and crappy reels because you'll regret it if you stick with it and you like it just get something decent but I didn't um, I started out not saying that master airbrushes are crap some of them are pretty decent but I went through the, the myriad of master airbrushes. I still have a couple probably buried in a box somewhere um, that have never been touched. I, I'm certain I have an E91 somewhere. But through trial and tribulation and getting frustrated and clogging and not being able to clean it properly and just, just really getting angry and annoyed with myself for not having what I thought was the skill level, Somebody said, hey, why don't you get a decent airbrush? So I did, and I went with a, to, this is my go-to right now. This is the Iwata Eclipse. It's an HPCS made in Japan, super easy to clean. It does, it'll do with a, I don't even use my, my .5 needle. It keeps my .35 in it constantly. I can do overlays, I can do layering, and I can get pretty good with detailing on that. The next step that I'm going to add in, I'm going to go with a more expensive Iwata. Not saying that Badgers and Posh and all that stuff out there is bad, but this is what I'm familiar with, and it's worked for me, and I'm confident in it, and it's super easy to clean, and it's reliable. I haven't had any knock on wood. I uh, haven't had any issues with seals or O-rings or anything. Um, the only thing that I've done in the past three years with this thing um, I've replaced the spring that right there. So that's all I've done. On to the basics. So anytime you have a lure, you need to be hands free with it. So I use these helping hands. And, and everything that I mentioned today is going to be linked in the description below. If you're curious about where to get the stuff, there's a lot of different places to get it. Uh, I just happen to be an online shopper and, and an affiliate um, now because I do it so so frequently. But there's links in the description for my Amazon stuff that you guys can get very easily and at a really decent price most of the time. But if it's not at a decent price, by all means, don't take my word for it. Shop around. Find your own bargains. These are called Helping Hands. And... They employ alligator clips. You can get alligator clips for like a hundred of them in a box for about ten dollars. So again, all of this stuff is going to be linked in the description below. So you need those. You also need masking tape. Masking tape is important because it's going to help you take the bills and get them nice and squeaky clean. Tape them off so that you can work properly with paint. Basic tools for the trade. Uh, I've got a bunch of paint brushes back there. I've got some of Jonas Summers, um, Lure Color Studios, the originals. Uh, bought a bunch of them back in 2015 or 16 when I was just starting out. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I but I was smart enough to realize the meat and potatoes. So I got stuff for wiggle warts, which is in my area. And I got stuff for 1.5 and 2.5 square bills which is the majority of what people buy in my area and then online. Um, they buy square bills, S-cranks, and jerk baits the most frequently. So if you're just starting out and you're wondering what blank should I get to start out if I'm thinking about selling it, that's what you should get to start out. You should get jerk baits and square bills 
and S cranks and you'll be good to go because a lot of people are going to buy them from you. Um, wraps, different types of wraps. I've gone over all of that in detail in videos as well. So just check out some of my videos. Uh, we do spray sessions regularly on this channel. So that's going to help you learn how to do some of the different wraps and layering differently and kind of the way I do it and the way I apply my chaotic head to a pattern. Glitter. Glitter is important. Some people ask for it. Some clients want glitter, especially if they're doing stained water. They need as much light pop and refraction and all that stuff on the baits. Uh, needle nose pliers is a must and wire cutters. I use the wire cutter portion of it when I'm creating these. I use these to hang baits on the clear coat racks. I have two of them that are self-made, obviously. I've got this clear coat rack here, which is my primary, and then I've got this clear coat rack here, which is my secondary. So I can accommodate up to, uh, let's see, on a good day, this is 10, 20, 30. I've got a front and a back here, so probably about 20 per there and 20 down there. So. If I'm rocking and rolling and I'm doing stuff within a 48 hour period, which I've done before, um, it helps to have a couple of different stations. I pull the carpets back and you can see where this is just dripped down on the floor. So there's epoxy there. Underneath, underneath, underneath all my blanks and they're stored by, these, these guys are stored by what they are. So I, I store them by medium divers. Topwater and lipless, jerk baits, uh, dinger and shelts, the dinger being that party crank, S crank, shallow cranks, which is your square bills, your 65.8 A's, um, flat sides, there's the stuff, the, there's a box of stuff that I get samples from companies overseas all the time. Try this, try that, try that. Um, so that's pretty much it in deep cranks. So that's how I separate everything out. You can see that everything's in a Ziploc bag and it's zipped tightly. And that's to keep any excess blow off airbrush dust, paint dust from affecting it. And if you're not storing it, you will find over a period of time, if you're working in a small enclosed space like me, no matter how careful you are, after four years, you're gonna get overspray. You're gonna get, that's all overspray from airbrush paint dust. Which brings me to my next wear it go get one spend 20 30 dollars on a respirator and wear it i don't care if you're a smoker a non-smoker it's just i'm sorry it's dumb if you don't i'm i i hate to say that um the only time that i don't wear it is when i'm doing a spray session and i want you guys to be able to hear what i'm saying that's it. That's the only time I don't wear this respirator. Other than that, it's on. It's on for the duration of the time that I'm spraying every single day. So please get an air, uh, a respirator. And I've got links for those. This is a pretty simple one. And I don't, um, I change the filters out when I need to, usually about every three or four months. Um, on the inside, there's little cartridges that you can change out. And I don't do a whole lot of heavy resin or a lot of crazy chemicals out here. Uh, I know that some of the guys that are doing, they're doing resins and they're dipping, you know, like Pete and all those guys, they wear much more intense respirators. And I see them wearing respirators on camera, which is also important. So yay, Pete. Woo. Go boy. Paint. I like paint. I just do. I love paint. I've got paint all over the shop. This is the stuff that sits here every single day. This is two ounce, four ounce, eight ounces, and there are 16 ounces back there the big ones and the big ones are the ones that I use on a regular basis so detail magenta black black moss green wicked golden detail which is that goldenrod color jacquard black transparent and then some of the other bigger ones and this is just like the basic colors I keep I go through a lot of fluorescence um, some of the most some of the most patterns that people are getting are the fire tiger colors and I keep the brand name stuff up here, keep accessories and hooks over here, keep everything pretty much within an arm's reach of my workstation if I can. All my detailing inks 
and the more boutique type stuff like your com art um, dr phil's fw all of the detail inks stay by color on these shelves and again there's your airbrush dust so it does i don't care how careful you are with it it's going to get on your stuff over time so if you have computer and i do i keep my i have a workshop laptop out here that's on all the time um, and i'm probably negligent to it because i know that dust will get in there and screw up my hard drive eventually overflow and then some of the non-water-based paints are over here i keep those separated and then my pearlized stuff this is this is all just extra paints of what's not on the shelf I just did a really encompassing video on how I store my clear coat which is KBS diamond strength which is this stuff right here um, I still swear by it use it love it I use airbrush cleaner from Iwata and I don't reduce it although I get a lot of comments and a lot of you guys especially in the brotherhood that tell me that or tell people in general that you can reduce this stuff and that they use fantastic and they and that's good if that's what works for you then i'm certainly not going to argue your points uh they're valid and and they work for you but i just prefer to use the actual cleaner that was designed it's probably a gimmick packaging who knows but it does it does clean and it does work and i don't have issues with clogs when i do it's very easy to clean them out 91% isopropyl alcohol is also important to keep with you on hand nearby somewhere. Um, it's going to help you clean your paint clogs out a lot faster because alcohol breaks down paint at a very rapid pace. Just scientific facts, folks. Just the facts. Ooh, what else do you need to see out here? Packaging and gifts. I get lots of thank you thank you thank you thank you i get lots of gifts from folks in fact i think over here here over here this is a box of clear boxes that was sent to me from i want to say nick peters is this from you nick let's see if it is i'm not going to give you your address away but yes nick just sent me a bunch of clear bags i have yet to open it it came yesterday yesterday Today is Friday. No, it probably came when Wednesday afternoon. I think it came. I don't need days are difficult for me sometimes. Uh, where are we? Let's see. Hooks, upgrades. My standard hooks sit over here, and we're going to get into that in just a second. My upgraded hooks are here. Um, not all of them, I would say, up grades or equivalents depending on what my clients want so the kvd elites are must add hooks i buy them by the bulk i get them from a couple of different places um, if you have a business license and an eid number you can buy them from shorties out of missouri which is the next state up for me which is where i get the majority of my bulk hooks or you can get them from barlow's they also have pretty decent hook buys uh, I used to get all my VMC bulk from Barlow's, but now all my bulk is KVD Elite short shank trebles, four, six, twos, mostly fours and sixes. And then I've got VMCs over here. I've got Trocars over here. I've got Gamagatsu finessier type stuff, owner stinger hooks. So just most of the stuff that people, and this is most of the time people don't request hook upgrades and i don't know if they do at tackle warehouse or not but the only ones that do are my my heavy duty tournament anglers they might want something with a trocar on it so i try and keep fours and sixes uh on hand for these guys i buy split rings by the bulk and that's a whole nother animal unto itself because shorties has a number two that's the exact same size as the barlow's number three so usually twos and threes are the size split ring that you guys are going to want to use uh, the the larger the number the larger the size split ring that's the rule of thumb and then as we walk around just basic stuff oh and i mentioned it yesterday real quick but i'll mention it again reference books are very important especially if you want to grab match the hatch stuff or you're looking for new patterns that's a molly 
No photos, please. This is stuff that's not, this is all acrylic pouring. This is all a whole different aspect of stuff as is that. That's all watercolor stuff. That's all watercolor stuff. That's all technical and detail drawing for watercolor illustration. And then we have the finishing desk on the finishing desk. I keep a little tray of stuff that I use every day from knives to tweezers to my signing pen, which at the moment is a white, just a, I usually use the black ones, but my, I ran out and this is what they had at the store. A couple of pair of split ring uh, pliers. And I like uh, the other question that I get, and I use the one that's sitting right here. I like split ring pliers where this tip comes out beyond the hook catcher or the split ring catcher. Um, it just, it works. I like being able to pick it up, pull it, and this is very well worn, which is why I usually keep a couple of extra pair on hand. This came from Bass Pro Shops. It's just a generic pair. I've had to super glue the handles on because they slide off, and I've had to readjust the little spring on the inside, but other than that, they've these have held up for a couple of years, but I keep a couple more and I've got one over there, right there. Like, so I keep them on hand. Um, an extra HPCS. And then that's pretty much it. If, if I've missed anything, I apologize. But you guys asked for this, so I wanted to make sure that I was able to give you guys what you were asking for to see what I had. This is yesterday's because most of my day yesterday afternoon after I edited my morning video was over here because I had to put a new hard drive in my desktop all of that came apart and that's not worth showing you guys because it was more frustrating than anything else so yep I can put in a hard drive as well and I ended up having to do that uh, just real quick if you guys were interested in packaging and shipping I do have a little station over here above all my crazy plastics that I have for fishing um, just packaging tape and I use duct tape by the way uh, the duck brand of masking tape basic stuff and also packaging tape for packages i just bulk buy my envelopes from amazon it's none really nothing special there and that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions or comments or anything that i may have missed i apologize but uh i just you guys asked for the tour so that's the tour of the workstation and my gear oh eyes i didn't mention eyes but i have by color silvers and golds reds blacks blues and greens the boutique stuff dragon eyes which you can get from bass pro by the way they're white river um, a lot of guys use these for foam things in fly tying jet uh, jetson lure eyes the bigger stuff for aren't they big huge aren't they it's awesome so the bigger stuff for walleye and uh, pike and musky lures in there and then i have this as well which is just a ton of stuff people ask me where i get my eyes those are linked in the description below as well i hope you guys have a great day thanks for hanging out with me probably ran a little bit over what i wanted to do but this is what you guys wanted to see and i'll see you on the next one we're going to do a spray session this weekend Woohoo! cheers happy casting